Hi everybody, something that's becoming more and more common in exams now is to show the impact of differing XCD values diagrammatically. That's a bit weird, you might think. Uh, but not if you understand what XCD is all about. So XCD is all about the relationship between complements and substitutes, and basically uh, how much demand will react if the price of a complement goes up or down, or if the price of a substitute goes up and down, right? So when the price of a complement changes or apply price of a substitute changes, what you need to draw is a shift of demand, either left or right, depending on whether it's a complement going up or down in price or a substitute going up or down in price. But what XED will tell you is how much to shift that demand curve, and that's what this video is going to focus on. So let's start by looking at XED values of maybe minus 0.3 or minus 3. What we have here are complements, minus tells us that, the negative tells us that, weakly related, minus 0.3, and strongly related, greater than 1, minus 3 here. So, how do we show the impact of these values on a diagram? Well, let's start. I'm not going to apply this, because uh, what I'm trying to show is just how to draw the diagram. Okay? So, maybe it's a really simple um, uh, relationship between, let's take, Nespresso uh, machines and Nespresso capsules. Alright, so let's say that the price of Nespresso machines has gone up by 10%. If the XED between Nespresso machines and Nespresso capsules is minus 0.3, then a 10% increase in the price of Nespresso machines is going to lead to a 3% fall in the quantity demanded of Nespresso capsules. So if this is the market for Nespresso capsules, we have an initial demand curve, call it D1. Demand is going to shift to the left, that's a given if there's a price rise. But because the XED relationship is minus 0.3, the shift is going to be relatively small. So let's call that D2. Right, so initial price P1, and that price hasn't changed for Nespresso capsules, it's changed for Nespresso machines. So maybe at D1, the quantity demanded is at 100. If the XCD is minus 0.3, then if the price of machines and Nespresso machines has gone up by 10%, then the quantity of capsules is going to fall by 3%, which here is going to take quantity down to 97. But, let's say the XED value is minus 3, then a 10% rise in the price of Nespresso machines will lead to a 30% fall in the quantity demanded of Nespresso capsules, which will lead to a much greater shift to the left of demand, from D1 to maybe D3, which, forget the scale, which is way off here, which would take us to 70, that's a 30% decrease. So what I'm trying to say here is that, to show the impact of XED values diagrammatically, it's going to be a demand shift. But using numbers, you can be very clear. If you know what the XED values are, then you can make up some numbers and make it appropriate to show how a weaker relationship means the shift is going to be smaller, a stronger relationship means that the shift is going to be greater. All right, so this is if the price of Nespresso machines went up. If the price of Nespresso machines went down, then instead of demand shifting left, demand will shift to the right. And again, the greater the XED value, the greater the shift. We can do the same thing with substitutes, all right? So let's take, uh, a simple example, Nike trainers versus Adidas trainers, all right? First, let me just label my axis here. So I'm going to assume that this is the market for Adidas trainers. So let's say the price of Nikes went up, um, again, keep the numbers simple, by 10%. We know that because we have got positive numbers here, we're working with substitute goods, weakly related here, strongly related there. So the price of Nike trainers went up and the relationship between Nikes and Adidas trainers uh, is plus 0.3, then there would be an increase in demand of Adidas trainers, but only by 3%. If the XCD value was plus 3, then if Nike trainers went up by 10%, quantity demand of Adidas trainers would go up by 30%. All right? So we have initial demand, call it D1, for Adidas trainers. And uh, if the XD relationship is plus 0.3 and Nike's went up by 10%, there would only be a small increase in demand. So demand will shift to the right, but only a little bit. So the price of Adidas trainers has not changed. So let's say again, keep the numbers simple is what I'm trying to tell you, at 100 here. Then uh, the increase with a 0.3 relationship would only be to 103, that's a 3% increase. Whereas if the figure was plus 3, you would shift demand much, much more. Okay, to D3, and that would lead to an increase to 130. That's a 30% increase 
if the price of Nike traders goes up by 10%. All right? So the technique here is very simple. You're showing shifts of demand, you're varying the size of the shift according to the XCD value. The bigger the XCD value, the bigger the shift. All right? If you're really being uh, clever, you can say, look, um, for minus 0.3, that is the shift from D1 to D2, so you can make that clear. This one is the shift from D1 to D3. Lovely, and the same here. So this one is D1 to D2, and this one is D1 to D3. All right, so just make it really clear to the examiner you know what you're doing. All right, so a simple technique there to follow. Uh, as always, check the uh, checklist. There isn't much to worry about here except there's labeling everything, which we have to label our axis. We've labeled our curves fine. There are no equilibria, but we have done the price and quantities correctly as well, so we can take that off too. That's all you need to do for this, okay? So take it in, uh, understand it, and replicate it in your exam. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video.